What is up, my friends? My name is Guy. I am a full-time filmmaker obsessed with self-development and lifestyle design. And in this video series, I'm gonna take a close look at an app called Roam Research. It's a note-taking app that I've started using only a short while ago, and I'm already completely obsessed with it. But when I tell people about it, a lot of people stall because when you sign up for it, you're effectively just looking at an empty page and it's kind of hard to know how to get going. So the point of this video is to give a brief overview of the basic functionality of Roam so you can get started with it. And I'm gonna share my personal approach to getting started with the platform very, very quickly. That's helped me get over that initial hurdle of staring at that blank page and start reaping the benefits of this beautiful tool. So let's get going. Here's a page from my personal Roam graph, and you can see it looks a lot like Workflow or Dynalist. Um, but the key difference is that I can create a new page from any word or sentence in my notes, or I can just tag them by using a hashtag like this. And all this does is create a new page for that specific term. So let's simplify this. I'm gonna put a separate video in the description box below that's uh, just giving you an overview of how to actually sign up when you first get to roamresearch.com. The onboarding process is a little bit confusing. Um, there are a couple of terms in there that didn't quite make sense to me when I first started it and I wasn't quite sure about like sharing options on the graph. Once you sign up, you see this empty page and that is what freaks people out. So don't be thrown off by that. There are effectively only two basic structures in Roam. There are pages, and within pages, there are blocks. For starters, there are also really only two things you can do in Roam. You can write, and you can link. You can write on a page, which means that you're creating blocks, or you can link either to a page or a block. Roam is quite a new app, so there are a lot more recently integrated features that allow you to do things that are a lot more complicated. But for starters, these are the only two things that you really gotta know how to use to get started with the platform very quickly. If you input a note on any topic, every time you mention something in your writing that you feel deserves its own page, you just simply highlight it and you double press these brackets. Roam then automatically creates this new page for the highlighted word and if the passage that you've highlighted here already exists because you've highlighted it before in like a different section of your notes, it'll simply add this block of writing to the already existing page. And what I love is that when it creates a page for you, it doesn't actually take you to that page, which is something I really appreciate because when I'm journaling, I don't wanna get ripped out of my flow of journaling when my cylinders are firing. I just wanna stay on that same page and know that I've created that other page and it's there waiting for me, but it, it doesn't take me to it, which is quite nice. The same goes for how you input notes on a page. So everything is designed to let you just journal in the most free form way possible, which is beautiful. Each bullet point is its own block. So that's what I mean when we talk about blocks, it's effectively just a bullet point and you can indent it as you like. So as many times as you like, like this. And then if you want to collapse your block for better overview, you simply click this toggle button. This is really important. Your baseline for any note is your daily note section. So that's just up here in the corner. So that's kind of like your default place to go. So you click up here and you see the page for today and it's automatically titled with today's date. And this is something I actually really love because if you're like me and you're always doing some sort of uh, journaling, whether that's morning pages or the five minute journal, or even back in the day when I was an exchange student in high school, I um, had like this little physical notebook that I would just write in to record like all of my thoughts for the day and, and also just the things that happened on that day that was kind of more old school journaling. It's just kind of an easy and intuitive way of organizing your notes. I think it makes sense to a lot of us to organize things by, by days. I don't have to think, where is this going? Where does it fit into my system? Does it go into pillar A or pillar B? Uh, it's just kind of an easy way to take away that inhibition of writing stuff down because you know that things kind of start and end in your daily notes section. All of this is part of Rome's bottom-up associative thinking approach. And I wanna talk for a second about the core philosophy underlying Rome and why it's so important for your personal productivity. Yuval Harari's book, Sapiens, about the history of human evolution, talks about the importance of the invention of writing and how it helped us overcome the limitations of our own brain in terms of storage because we could now store things outside of our own brain for the first time. And those first systems of writing, contrary to what a lot of people believe, weren't actually used to write novels or poetry. They were mathematical in nature and they were used to keep track of who owns what, which makes a lot of sense because that was the main pain point for people at the time in order to peacefully coexist. The problem with that is, is that our brains don't naturally work that way. Check out this quote from the book. In the brain, all data is freely associated. So when I go with my spouse to sign up for a mortgage for our new home, I am reminded of the first place we lived together, which reminds me of our honeymoon in New Orleans, which reminds me of alligators, which reminds me of dragons. And then the second quote, 
In bureaucracy, things must be kept apart. There is one drawer for home mortgages, another for marriage certificates, a third for tax registries, and a fourth for lawsuits. Otherwise, how can you find anything? This last question, how can you find anything, is effectively what Rome is attempting to solve. And it does so without pressuring you into this top-down bureaucratic way of storing your information like a lot of the other note-taking apps. It's not like you have to either pick the bureaucratic route or the associated freeform route. I believe you can really have it both ways. And what Rome does is it lets your brain roam free, like the name suggests, uh, but it lets you do that without you having to worry that you're not going to find anything afterwards. And that is because of the way that Rome implements bi-directional links to connect all of your thoughts in this neural network of information. It's incredible. All you have to do is stop for two seconds every once in a while to link a page. And that raises the question of when do you do that? When do you stop to create a new page? Here's my personal philosophy on this. I just create a page whenever I have the slightest impulse to do so. It allows me to stay in the flow of writing, uh, which is I think the most important thing when you're using Rome. And I can then be quite liberal and spontaneous with how and when I tag a page. Certain things do belong in more structured environments like client lists or film ratings or um, I've actually started uh, taking wine tasting notes. I know it's so weird saying that, but I've started taking notes on the different wines I drink. They do work a lot better in something like Notion. I do use Notion and we're gonna talk about that in a later video, but whenever you're building elaborate databases, uh, it's better to use a program, I believe, that lets you come up with that upfront framework and I think nothing really beats Notion in terms of the ability to do so. But with Rome, I just want to have as little upfront work as possible because the key for me is that whenever I have any sort of inspiration, uh, be that an idea for a new film or a, a personal issue that I really want to journal about and I feel like it's fresh in my mind, I don't want to feel that inhibition of thinking, where do I put it? Does it belong into this folder or this folder? No, I can just go to my daily notes section and I can start writing without having to think about how it's going to connect to all the other things because that's what Rome does for me. So be liberal with your tags. And look, oftentimes it's going to be fairly obvious. Like I've started reading this book, When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Calanthe, and it's fantastic. Because I know I'm reading the book, I'm going to want to take notes. So it makes sense for me to create that page. And I, as a side note, I do actually use a set of integrations that lets me import my Kindle notes directly into Rome. And I'm going to talk about that in a separate video as well. But other times I'm just writing and I have this impulse that something I just mentioned might deserve its own page. So I just go ahead and tag it with either the brackets or the hashtag. And actually, if you don't like the lowercase writing uh, of the hashtags, because I don't, <laughs> I just put brackets inside my hashtag. I don't think it changes anything. It just looks a little bit prettier. And now check this out. I've created this new page. If I do want to go to that page, I just click here. And now I see all of the mentions of that same tag in the past. So that is the key. But it doesn't stop there. I can also see all of the times I wrote about this topic and I didn't stop to tag it. And these mentions are down here in my unlinked section. So I can toggle that open and here are all of the mentions of sleep laid out for me. And it's so cool. I can just go through them and choose to link them here. Or I can just leave them unlinked if I don't find it that important for me right now. It still stays there in the unlinked, but it's not highlighted up in like a separate block. And that is what makes Rome so unique and beautiful because whenever you mention the page, because of those bi-directional links, yes, this mention gives you a gateway to the new page, which is nice, but it also links your previous page in that new page in the form of a block. So that's really what makes it so powerful. Because when it comes to retrieving certain information, yes, I could find it in the search function, which is great. But more importantly, I'm often retrieving just information through natural association when I stop to create new pages because it'll link to things that I didn't necessarily know had anything to do with what I was writing about. And that is effectively how our brains and neural networks naturally work. So it's, it's like Harari who was thinking of alligators when he was buying a new house. So here is my number one tip for how to get started with Rome very, very quickly. Go to your main place of information storage right now, whether that's a physical journal or a Dynalist. For me, it was Evernote. And so yeah, I can go into my Evernotes and literally in Rome, just go to your daily notes section and type importing my holiday notes from Evernote. And then you tag holidays here and boom, you have a new page. And now you copy paste all of your notes from that Evernote page into your Rome page. And as you go through them, 
you just structure the notes the way you like and you adjust it to this format and you can tag and create a new page whenever you feel like it. It's nice because you're actually reading back some of your old notes, which is always a nice thing. But literally over the course of 10 to 20 minutes of doing so, you will start seeing how all of the things that you've written down in the past in this, in my case, hierarchical folder structure of Evernote, start naturally connecting and linking in meaningful ways in Rome. And it's it happens by just going through and following those impulses to tag certain pages that you feel are important. And you can then check out this fun feature on here where you go to your graph overview and you see all of the pages interlink. So the bigger bubbles here are the pages you link to more often. And honestly, this isn't very useful uh, for now. It's just kind of a cool tool to see and visualize how all of my thoughts and learnings interlink. But I'm sure as I use Rome more often, over time, I'm gonna start seeing some value in it. Uh, Rome is primarily optimized for research. Um, and the research can obviously you know, apply to a lot of different things. But let's say if you're in academia and you're working on a thesis, it should be quite obvious how incredibly powerful Rome is. I think there is so many industries that can benefit from using a tool like this. And um, I'm going to want to outline them in separate videos in the future. That is it for now. If you want to get started with Rome, I recommend you go into your Evernote and you start copy pasting and populating your Rome with your old notes. And then you're good to go after that. Uh, you have it pretty much set up and you can just go to your daily notes section and write down things whenever they pop into your head. In the next video, we're going to introduce some more features of Rome, uh, some things like to-do lists. And I'm going to share with you my set of integrations that I use to import my Kindle notes directly into my Rome. Um, and then we're also going to talk about the sidebar, which is really, really cool. Like and subscribe if this was helpful. It's a new channel I'm building here as I'm discovering ways to add more inspiration, productivity and money to my life as a full time filmmaker. And hopefully some of these tools will do the exact same for you. So any questions or comments, good or bad, put them below. I can talk about Rome all day and you know I'm going to be more than happy to do so in the comments. Thank you so much and I'll see you real soon.